grateful through the ages. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenants, of faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it'll come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting, same I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to from age to age, though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same, yeah, your history can prove, there's nothing you can do, you're faithful and true, though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast, and let my You'll never let me down 
shouting, same I will praise your name. Praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. Dear family and friends, we have gathered together to witness the marriage of Jason and Selen and to celebrate together with them on this special day. Marriage is a union that was first established and also ordained by God. At creation, God made them male and female. Jesus declared that for this reason, a man should live, leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. Now, Jason and Selen, the challenge and joy of marriage is both mental and physical. But I remind both of you today that it's also spiritual. It is not I who is joining you together, but it's the hand of our Heavenly Father. Knowing this, who has given this woman to be married to this man? Would you pray with me this afternoon? Our Father, we have come today as family and friends, asking your blessings upon these two lives and this home being established. We are thankful for the love we see here, even more the love we feel from you. May we never take your love for granted. We pray that your love will be a shield and will stay with Jason and Selen forever. When joy comes, may they share it together. When sorrow threatens, may they bear it together. In gladness or in tears, sun, sunshine or shadow, may they ever draw closer to each other and nearer to you in the eternal triangle. We ask for health, for long life, and the fulfillment of every good dreams. We pray these things in the confidence, in the strong name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let us worship the Lord together this afternoon. Praise the Lord. Our God is good. Amen. And He is good all the time. Amen. Amen. Avenue Maha Krube or the Kates to the camp. Avenue Narathia Vidangale or the Avenue Namukay and Nan Magaleke on the Ortha Namukasudikabo. Amen. Amen. Let's all join together and sing these songs and worship our God. Maha Krube Kia Krube Kia Ninayan Studi Chirumenum. Nin maha krube kya nin neyan studi chidu menum nin maha krube kya nin neyan studi chidu menum. Nin maha krube kya nin neyan studi chidu menum onnu mil ay mil nin ne nin ode 
छायल सृष्टि छु नित्य माय स्नेही चन्ने तन्दे पुत्र रे तन्नु रे शिचुनी ओन्नु मिल लाय मिल निन्ने निन्नोडे छायल सृष्टि छु नित्य माय स्नेही चन्ने तन्दे पुत्र ने तनु रेक्षिचुनी निमाहा ग्रुवेक्याय निन्ने न्यान स्तुदि चीडु मेनुम निमाहा ग्रुवेक्याय निन्ने Studi chidu menum nin maha nin maha krube kya hange nyan studi chidu menum nin maha krube kya nin ne nyan studi देवते स्नेही किंबो सर्वम नन्म क्या भविचिरुनु तीरुस्वर Yeah. 
Thank you, Sonu and Josh, for leading us in a time of worship. On behalf of both of the families, let me take this opportunity to welcome everyone to this beautiful occasion that is about to happen here this afternoon. Do me a favor, take him 30 seconds and say hi to your neighbor. Tell him you look good today. Put a smile on your face. Everybody's so tense. Yes, everybody looks so good. It is great to see everyone here on this once again. On behalf of both families, I welcome you in the name of the Father, the Son, and in the Holy Spirit. At this time, would you stand with me for the reading of the word? Pastor Ron Kerdoff will come forward and lead us in a psalm reading right off after that. We will have a time of English worship. So the worship team that is uh, singing for the English worship, please make your way to the forward. And right after the English worship, Pastor Matthew Wergis, pastor for Jason from Oklahoma Sharon Church, will take a few minutes to share from the Word of God. Pastor Ron will be re leading us in the scripture reading. Psalm 45. My heart is stirred by a noble theme as I recite my verses for the king. My tongue is the pen of a skillful writer. You are the most excellent of men, and your lips have been anointed with grace. Gird your sword upon your side, O mighty one. Clothe yourself with splendor and majesty. In your majesty, ride forth victoriously. In behalf of truth, humility, and righteousness, let your right hand display your awesome deeds. Let your sharp arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies. Let the nations fall beneath your feet. Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. All your robes are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia, from palaces adorned with ivory, the music of the strings make you glad. Daughters of kings are among your honored women, and at your right hand is the royal bride in gold of Ophir. Listen, O oh daughter, consider and give ear. 
Forget your people and your father's house. The king is enthralled by your beauty. Honor him, for he is your Lord. The daughter of Tyre will come with a gift. Men of wealth will seek your favor. All glorious is the princess within her chamber. Her gown is interwoven with gold. In embroidered garments, she is led to the king. Her virgin companions follow her and are brought to you. They are led in with joy and gladness. They enter the palace of the king. Your sons will take the place of your fathers. You will make them princes throughout the land. I will perpetuate your memory through all generations. Therefore, the nations will praise you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We serve a God who is worthy of every praise. Amen. Amen. He's holy and he's worthy. So let's just sing to him this morning. Hallelujah. Worthy of every song we could ever sing And worthy of all the praise we could ever bring And worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for, for you, you. Mm, Jesus in Jesus, the name above every other name. In Jesus, the only one who could ever say. And worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
thank you uh, benchi and dina leading us to worship it's god's glorious presence is over here so we are gathered over here for the glorious divine event i greet all of you in the sweet name of father son and the holy spirit i'm so happy to be the part of this wonderful ceremony in this beautiful sanctuary i'm very specifically greet today's bride helen and groom jason and their parents for your commitment devotion to raise these children in a spiritual way so this is a very joyful occasion i acknowledge the presence of all the past guests friends and family those who are present over here and also the people those who are watching through the online especially from sharon fellowship church oklahoma i am matthew vargis pastor of sharon fellowship church jason and his family they are worshiping with us they are very outstanding members in our fellowship and they are the pioneer members in our fellowship i know jason uh, for the last 5 years so his parents we call him kunwa pichan and uh, gracian too they love god they love god's people they love god's mission and they are praying parents and they raise their children uh, four children in a very strict ecclesiastical discipline <laughs> very strict ecclesiastical discipline so he is so strict in that way <laughs> so jason obtained his uh, master's degree in nursing and currently he is working as a nurse practitioner he is our youth coordinator and one of our board member in our fellowship so his contribution and uh, service are very much valued and appreciated and his uh, brother jerry uh, and benita <coughs> they are also the part of our uh, worship team uh, jerry is also one of the board member in our congregation so they are really a great blessing in our fellowship and jason um elder sister shelly vichu they are and their children they are so blessing to us and shelly is um, one of our sunday school teacher and she is also one of the advisory board member in our fellowship then sherry and anil and their children they are uh, really a great blessing to our congregation um, sherry has a very wonderful testimony from the lord she obtain theological degree from asbury theological seminary so uh, they are really great blessing to our community and our fellowship so selin you are coming to a wonderful family and to a blessed church two years ago kunyapchan had gone through jason's dad had gone through uh, some of the physical issues in his life and all these children and their family and their grand and his grandchildren they were gathered together every evening holding hands together and praying for the healing of this kunyapchan god miraculously healed him and he is here to witness this beautiful ceremony amen during that time he had two desires to see his uh, elder son's baby gabriel and also uh, see the wedding of his younger son jason god fulfilled his desires god is always fulfilling our desires god is good god is faithful so how many of them are able to say hallelujah in this beautiful occasion hallelujah oh people of god in chat chatnoga are you familiar with the word hallelujah <laughs> if you would like to attend the 
great wedding ceremony in the future, you need to learn this word. Hallelujah. Amen. So let me share a few things from the God's word. I'm just going to start my message. Those who wanted to take a good nap, you have the freedom to do that. So don't do the snoring over here because it's a boring for me. <laughs> so marriage is one of the prominent and dominant theme in the Bible. Bible begins with the story of marriage and ends with the wedding announcement. In New Testament begins with the genealogy of a wonderful family and our Lord Jesus Christ, he attended the wedding ceremony at Cana and turned the water into wine. So marriage is honorable to all people. It's honorable in secular perspective and also in spiritual perspective. In secular perspective, it has different form and it has different category. In our present day community, there are different forms of marriage system. So there is a same sex family system in our culture. Same sex family system is one of the fast growing family system in our community. And also cohabitation, living together. Most of the Hollywood, Bollywood, Hollywood, and Mollywood movies are promoting the living togetherness. The cohabitation has two different branches, ding and dins. Ding means double income, no kids. Dins means double income, no sex. So it's one of the fast growing system in our culture. And another form of marriage concept in our culture is jigola, a young man living with an elderly woman for a companionship. That's called jigola. Then partner swap, exchanging the partners to other partners. So there are different forms and categories of family system in our present day community. But in Christian perspective, marriage is a glorious event. It's not just an event, it's a covenantal event. It's a lifelong commitment between one man and one woman living together in unity and in love. So let me share a few things about the purpose of a biblical marriage and the principle of a successful marriage. So there are a different purpose of the marriage. One of the major purpose of the marriage is it has a social purpose. Bible says that it's not good. Man should live alone. So marriage is for the companionship. So marriage is for the companionship. So marriage is the strongest, deepest, and intimate communication between two people in body, mind, and spirit. So it is the strongest and the deepest relationship between two persons in body, mind, and spirit. So we move our system, family system, from joint family to nuclear family system. Now we are in the cyber family system. In the cyber family system, media is our companion. We wake up with the media, walk with the media, work with the media, and sleep with the media. So media is managing and manipulating everything. So Jason and Selena, you have to sanctify your social media when you get into the marriage. So it's very important. So it has a social purpose. Social purpose is companionship. So people need people. Then the second purpose is the biological purpose. <coughs> the Bible says, be fruitful and So I mentioned about that ding and dins and living together are a major threat in the beauty of marriage systems. 
so second purpose is the biological purpose the procreation is the major concern of the marriage god's purpose is the multiplication of the human race through the sacred marriage then the third purpose is it has a spiritual purpose so there are three important purpose social purpose it's for the companionship biological purpose it's for the procreation and the spiritual purpose so god established three institution the first and the oldest institution is family it is established by triune god and it is established by holy god holy god so here you can see that the holy of holies holy so it's established by triune god so trinity is an important concept three person in one essence so trinitarian communication is showing that you need to love share care and sacrifice together so it is established by triune god and it is a holy matrimony holy means it's taken from the word kadesh the holy means consecrated set apart separated so it has a spiritual purpose that means christ love the church the same way you have to love together then three important principles of a successful marriage as you know that jesus attended one of the great wedding wedding at cana even though he was busy with his public ministry the first miracle jesus performed at the wedding at cana in that miracles you need to understand three principle for the successful marriage first one is invite jesus in your life invite jesus so that family invited jesus for that great wedding jesus attended that meeting that ceremony so i believe that both the both of these individuals they born and raised in a christian family and they know the principles and the values of the marriage system and the family system duties and responsibilities of the husband and wife and the parenting how are you how to invite jesus in your family that's the major thing that's the, one of the main thing so the family at cana they invited jesus into that wedding even though they faced many challenges their wife they lost their wife in jewish perspective wine is very important wine symbolizes thing in the happiness so they faced a great challenge in their life even though you invite jesus in your life you may face different challenges in your journey you may have a good career good education good job good family system life is not in our control so jason and selin you have a lot of dreams you have a lot of desires in your heart after this wedding so life is not in our control so you have to remember that if the beauty and fame are the ideal for the relationship the celebrities have the good family life they don't have it good family life you may face challenges in your life so remember that happiness is not created is not from a created things it's actually from a creator and human calculation has its own limitation there are many people they have iq intelligent quotient and there are many people they have eq emotional quotient but they cannot control their life so human calculation has its own limitation intellectual capacity cannot control everything so the next principle in your life first is invite jesus the second principle is allow jesus to involve in your problems in your challenges you will definitely face challenges every family face many challenges in there even in the biblical story you can see that abraham sarah had some emotional challenges zachariah and elizabeth had some physical challenges everybody has challenges but allow jesus to involve your life in gospel of matthew chapter 7 there we can see that jesus said to his disciples the two people they construct two houses one is upon the sand and another one is upon the rock 
So wind blew the houses. And rain comes and the flood comes up. But the house is built on the rock. It stands firm. So God is your founder. God is the author. God is the designer of your house. So allow Jesus, or invo allow Jesus to involve in your life situations. Then you will be successful. Then listen the instruction of God. In that wedding, they invite Jesus. They allow Jesus to involve in their challenges. And they listen God's word. You may have a lot of friends. You may have a lot of family members. You may get good counselors. But listen. The instruction of the Lord. So this family listen the instruction of Jesus Christ. Whoever listen the God's word, they will be successful. By his presence, that wedding was great. By his power, that wedding was grand. By his provision, that wedding was good. So Jason and Selim, may the good God continue to bless and flourish your life by his presence, by his power, and by his <coughs> provision. We, the Sharon Fellowship Church, continue to pray for you and support you. Thank you for this time. God bless. Thank you so much, Pastor, for sharing the word with us. The value and the importance of inviting Jesus and being obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit to go forward in a family life. The moment we have all been waiting for. Before I do that, before we, Jason and Selen, come forward and share the vows with each other, let me take a couple of minutes. And last night and today, Pastor Lidjo and Pastor Matthew Wurgis bragged on Jason. Let me take a moment and brag on Selen today. Now, first of all, the name Jason means, in the old Greek origin, means to heal. In the Hebrew, it means son of victory. Now, the name Selen means beautiful water. A place where water is beautiful or a flowing water. Now, I have known Selen since she was three years old. And this family is very dear to my family. And I was out with my dad the other day. We were driving to North Carolina and my dad made a statement to me. He could this family, since I came to this city in Chattanooga, Cleveland, when I, in 1998, there are certain families that are represented here. As long as I live, I will never forget them. And Selen's family is one of that. Jason, you have a great family. I call Selen's dad the Dave Ramsey of the Indian community. He is very well with his money. He spends well. Everything he does, he does it with excellence. And with the, her mom, she's a prayer warrior. She's a great cook. So, Jason, when you come back and your mom start cooking for you, you must invite me also. <laughs> you are walking into a great family. I have seen it with my own eyes. I have experienced their love and their compassion. So I am excited to see what God is going to do in your life and Selen's life. Selen, she is a beautiful flowing water. Selen, as your pastor, as your big brother, since I've known you as a three-year-old, I've seen you watch graduate high school, 
graduate college, and on glorious day like this, to be here to celebrate with you, it gives me great joy. I am very proud of you. And I, you will be missed. And I cherish you. She's a great singer. And I pray as she embark on this new journey, Selen, the hand of the Lord and the favor of the Lord will be with you. You will always be in my prayers. Now, marriage is a lifelong lesson, and it is the responsible of each of you to grow and learn about one another each day, secure in the knowledge that one thing is always constant, the love slash commitment you have for each other. Jason and Selen, you are about to enter a union that is most sacred and serious, requiring of those who enter into a complete, generously giving yourself. A couple of minutes, let me remind you. You are taking a holy step. What does that mean? Something holy belongs to God. Sometimes God creates a thing and keeps it for himself and announces it to the mankind that this thing is his and it should be treated with great respect. The scripture says you are holy, 1 Peter chapter 1. God has claimed both of you. You have given yourself to the Lord, have been accepted by our Father. We call marriage the holy wedlock. This belongs to God. He instituted marriage and he owns it. Second thing, may I humbly remind you, marriage is not about love. Sitting before a pastor and an attorney and a man and a woman say, we married because we fell in love. Now we have fallen out of love. We don't want to be married anymore. The pastor and the, and the attorney, attorney say, you people sure are doing a lot of falling. Falling in love and falling out of love. As though you are passive in all these things, as though you cannot help yourself. Listen to this. For better or for worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, till death do us apart. These are simple words, but they represent the essence of the wedding ceremony and the heart of the marriage. In a marriage ceremony for his niece, Diedrich Bonhoeffer said, love will not sustain your marriage, but marriage will sustain your love. Dear brothers and sisters and families, everyone here, marriage is about commitment. Can I say that again? Marriage is about commitment. Third thing I want to remind you quickly, not to expect their spouse to understand all their hurts and to meet all their needs. Ruth Bill Graham once said, many wives expect their husband to be, to be them what only Jesus Christ can be. It works for the husbands too. Do not put impossible expectation on each other. That is a surefire recipe for disappointment and frustration. Best to free others to be who they are and put your eyes and hope on the author and the finisher of your life. Two more things, we will get into the vows. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 says, Wife, summit your husband has the Lord. And the next verse gives us the reason for this command. For the husband is the head of the wife. It is for this cause that wife should be subject unto her husband in everything. These are divine instructions. They are command from the Lord. Selen, as the minister of the gospel, I remind you to honor 
Jason. Respect him. Cherish him. And know that he is the head of the household. Jason, as the minister of the gospel, when a woman has a husband who is in the Lord, she will find no difficulty into this command of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, Jason, the Apostle Paul, gave us a big responsibility for husbands. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. I always wonder, if you study that passage, you will understand. Women were created from the rib of a man to be beside him. Not from his head to be atop of him or from his feet to be trampled by him. But from under his arm to be protected by him. Near to his heart to be loved by him. Now Jason, the Apostle Paul, did not give us any other option. Right off the bat, he sets the bar very high. Paul said, we must love as Christ loved. How can we love our wives as Jesus loved the church? We show our love through our responsibility. What I mean by that, Jesus took the responsibility. That is the primary reason Jesus came to this world, to take responsibility for his bride, the church. God knew we could not do this home. So God sent his only begotten son to put on the flesh and took the responsibility for our failure. That, that was what Paul was talking about. We're all sinners. We're all messed up. The sin that I committed is my fault. The sin that you committed is your fault. We all have sinned time and time again. But at Calvary, Jesus took all of your sins and mine and put it on himself. He took the responsibility for our mistakes and for my mistakes. Jesus did this. That is the sin you have committed. It's on me. I take the responsibility. He did this for you because he loves you and we are his bride. He did this because he is the head of the church and he is responsible for the church. My brother sitting in this room, men, this is the picture that Paul is painting of marriage. This is what it means to be the head of the wife. Being masculine is not being the strongest or hitting the hardest or burping the loudest. It is not the ability to yell or scream. It is not the ability to turn everything into a funny joke. But to be the man God has called you is the responsible for you and the wife and the children the good Lord will give you. My brother Jason to love your wife as Christ loved the church means that you will do for your wife what Jesus did for the church. To me, that is the essence of the gospel. To me, that is the essence of this beautiful marriage ceremony. So, as I stated earlier, marriage as ordained by God is recognized by the church is the union between men and a woman who found special delight and strength in each other. Their desire is to allow to grow and mature into a deeper and meaningful relationship. May God bless us with these words. Many of you guys were at the engagement service, and I introduced the family there. Yesterday, and for a year or so, the family has been working together for this day. Both of the families have met and agreed on this day, these two individuals will get married. Since there is no hindrance according to the law, 
or anyone opposed to this holy matrimony, we are going forward with the ceremony in trusting God. All of you present here are witnesses to this marriage. Jason is the son of Mr. Kunyapi and Sister Grace Thomas. Would you please stand, let everyone see you, just the parents. Thank you. You may be seated. Yes, go ahead and give a hand. I was listening to pastor's testimony about Jason's father, how God has ordained you, man of God, to be here to witness your son. That was your desire, listening to your pastor. We worship a God that answers our prayer. I think it's appropriate to lift our hands and say, praise the Lord. Thank you. Selen. The daughter of Mr. and Samuel and Susan and Janata. Would you please stand? <laughs> Two wonderful family. In just a few minutes, a new missionary family will be established here. So, Jason Selen, would you please stand? Jason, in front of a holy God who knows all of your thoughts, I ask you, Jason, you are making a commitment to the woman standing next to you, Selen, to be your wife. To have and to hold from this day forward to live together after God's holy ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony. Will you love her, comfort her, honor her, and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaken all others, keeping yourself only unto her as long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I do. Selen, in front of God, who knows all of your thoughts, I ask you, Selen, you are making a commitment to the man standing next to you, Jason, to be your husband. To have and hold from this day forward to live together after God's holy ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony. Will you love him, comfort him, honor him, and keep him in sickness and in health and forsaken all the others Keeping yourself only unto him as long as you both shall live. If answer, yes, I do. Artugatan shutta namate pertu. Artugatan shutta namate pertu. Parti vantan nubagarate ortu. Parti vantan nubagarate ortu. Vartu gani manamehen. Parane vartu gani manamehen. Vartu gani. Manamehen parane vartugani maname. Jason is selling. The exchange of vows is the most sacred part of the ceremony. You are making a lifelong commitment to share and support one another, regardless of the events that come into your life. My charge as a servant of the Lord to both of you is the decisions you make at this altar, never waver from it. Keep them as a solemn vows that you're about to make to each other this day. Live with a tender and a consideration to one another. Conduct yourself with honesty and in truth. And always keep God in the center of your union. If you do this, your marriage will last. Your home will endure. 
and the marriage vows that you're about to make to each other this day will be a blessing to you and to everyone else in your life. Jason, please repeat after me. Looking in each other's eyes. <laughs> I, Jason, take you, Selen, I, Jason, take you, Selen, to be my wife. To be my wife. In the sacred union of marriage. In the sacred union of marriage. In so doing. In so doing. I commit my life to you. I commit my life to you. Embracing all sorrows and joys. Embracing all sorrows and joys. All hardship and triumph. All of life's experiences, all of life's experiences. For, better or for, worse. for better or for worse. Forsaking all others, Forsaking all others. I, commit to you alone. I commit to you alone. A commitment made in love, made in love. Kept, in faith. kept in faith, lived in hope, lived in hope. And, each day made new. and each day made new. I promise, I promise. to be honest with you. To share my thoughts and my life with you. To share my thoughts and my life with you. And to pray with you. And to pray with you. And lead our family. And lead our family. In seeking God's will. In seeking God's will. Until death parts us. Until death parts us. All of God's people said amen. Amen. Selen, would you please repeat after me? I sell and take you, Jason. I sell and take you, Jason. To be my husband. In the, sacred union of marriage. in the sacred union of marriage. And so doing, and so doing I, commit I commit my life to you. Embracing all sorrows, Embracing all sorrows. And, joys. and joys, all hardship, and, all hardship. and, triumph. and triumph, and all of life's experiences, of life's experiences. For, better for better or for worse. Forsaking all others, I commit to you alone. I commit to you alone. A commitment made in love. A commitment made in love. Kept in faith. Kept in faith. Lived in hope. Lived in hope. And each made, made new. I promise. I promise. To, be with you. to be honest with you. To share my thoughts. To share my thoughts. And my life to pray with you. My life to pray with you. And follow God. And follow God. As you lead our family. Until death parts us. Swarpurami kararinu sakshi nilkum in maname swargastani dambadi gart ashirvadam egidate. Bhagena, Bhagena, Devam Samyo, Jipichana, Bhagena, Bhagena, Devam Samyo, Jipichana. At this moment, Pastor Lidjo will lead us in two scripture reading from his Holy Scripture. Ephesians 5, 21 through 33. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourself to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself. As a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless in the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they fed and care for their own body just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall live his father 
and mother and be united to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must also respect her husband. Psalms 128, blessed are who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to him. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful wine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Yes, this is the blessing for the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Thank you for the word of God. Now, by the authority granted to me as the minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and in accordance with the law and the state of Tennessee, I now pronounce Jason and Selen husband and wife. Everybody got excited. <laughs> now, in the name of the Father, the Son, and in the Holy Spirit. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. Everybody say amen. Amen, amen. 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 Would you stand with me this afternoon? Pastor KJ Matthew is going to come forward and say the closing prayer and benediction. As pastor is coming forward, we're going to sing one more Malayalam worship song. Agasham bhoomi va nirmicha deva devan Agasham bhoomi va nirmicha deva devan Siyo nil ninni vare vartate Vartu vin param vartu vin Vartu vin param vartu vin Egan three egan agum sneha swarubi enum Egan three egan agum sneha swarubi enum Egan te mangalangal men melai vaartu vin param vaartu vin vaartu vin param vaartu vin aagasham bhoomi va nirmicha deva devan aagasham bhoomi va Nirmicha Deva Devan Siyo Nil Nilni Vare Vartate Vartu Vin Param Vartu Vin Vartu Vin Param Vartu Vin Praise the Lord Children Jason Selin, now you are married. Now on, you are one body, one spirit, one in your destination and your dreams. And God always with you. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father. Amen. We just witness the solemn and significant vows of marriage. Yes, God. O oh Lord, we thank you for your presence this afternoon with us. Amen. Without your presence, we are nothing. Yes, God. As this couple start their life's journey together. Yes, God. Almighty God, be with them in a special way. Amen. We hear a lot of bad things all around us. But under your wings, we have protection and we have guidance. Be with these children Amen. and bless them day by day, Almighty Lord. Yes, God. Sometimes 
we have to go through some valleys sometimes my dear children you may have to face some mountains but as jesus christ promised i am always with you yes god his presence guide you and comfort you and bless you in the future when sunday morning comes get up and get ready for sunday school and church and god day by day great blessings will be upon you grace loyalty and love always follow you and god bless you every day right now in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit yes god i bless you yes. and the congregation bless you amen praise god hallelujah 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 amen stotram 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 let god turn his face toward you yes god from zion and guide you always mm. and keep the word of god always in your heart yes god. and in your mind hallelujah and meditate it re read it meditate it and mm. you will get the blessing yes god and also i pray for the respective families of jason and selin bless mm. the congregation and all those who attend the wedding and uh, the rest of the uh, reception and uh, god provide and protect everybody and right now i say in jesus name amen right now the love of the heavenly father and the grace of our lord jesus christ amen and the communion of the holy spirit yes god be with this couple and their family and each and every one in the name of the lord jesus christ let everybody say it. Amen. amen amen god bless you amen you can face the audience ladies and gentlemen It gives me the great honor to introduce to you for the first time Mr. and Mrs. Jason Thomas.
Ladies and gentlemen, would you please be seated for one minute? Selen's favorite brother is going to come forward and make some final announcements about our reception and the cocktail hours. Justin Antonado is right there. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I, th I think by default, I'm the favorite brother. So I'm the only brother. So <laughs> that's that. So on behalf of the family, I'd like to, like, like to say thank you all for um, attending the wedding of Jason and Selen. I would like to invite you all to join us for cocktail hour and the reception all starting at 4.30 at Stratton Hall, um, which was actually recently renamed as Restoration Southside Church. The address is 3146 Broad Street. After the prayer, please start making your way to the event space. Uh, meanwhile, if you're a family, please stay here for some pictures um, after the service. Thank you. The families asked me to say the prayer for the food right here. So when you get there, you can jump in and enjoy the cocktail hours. Immediate family, please stay here for pictures. Rest of us are free to go to the Stratton Hall for the cocktail hour. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for being with us. As we leave this place of worship, we take the presence of the Lord with us to the reception. Thank you for the food that is before us. I ask of God that you have prepared for us. I ask that your blessings will be upon that. And with the strength we receive from the food, help us to continue to live for you. In Jesus' name I pray. All of God's people said, amen. amen. You are officially dismissed. Thank you. We'll see you at the reception.